56772. Code red, three south. This price, extension 22271. Dr. Montague, 5 west, 58101. Delta. Once you don't know how to play, actually, you think you can suffer to any retractor? This is supposed to be a learning experience, Dr. McKay. Either. Okay. No, McKay. No, Doc. Yes, Doctor. Very good. Very good. Richardson. Larry. Oh, boy. Three hours of holding back this guy's belly. That's terrific. Get smart. I'll make it last four. The way you drink, I don't think your kidneys could take it. Packing. The thing is, Marty, you don't want to go someplace else to finish your residency. It's too good a hospital. Then what do I do? You've got two choices, babe. You start learning to kiss the right boots, or you do what I did. The baby pick up. Become such a good surgeon that nobody would dare not give you what you want. Robin? Yes. I'm Dr. Brent. Your husband's in recovery. He's all right, sir. We'll be able to see him. Ah, oh, he's all right, but there won't be much to see. He'll be sleeping for a while yet. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, well, that's what I'm here for, Mrs. Robin. To do what I can. I have some questions. Dr. Mayor has assisted. He'll be happy to tell you whatever you'd like to know. Bye-bye. But... Mrs. Robin. Everything went just as we expected it to. We removed a section of the aorta and we replaced it with a graft. Dr. Franklin, it's going to be please fine. Call the phase. Dr. Franklin, please call the phase. Morning, Paul. Tom, you know where I can find an intern named Heverly? Yeah, and that far cut. Well, you on call today? Huh? All my trading offs finally caught up with me. I'll be on call this whole week. Oh. Get your hands out of my gut, Doctor. Dr. Heverly? What have we here? Shooting pain in the right lower quadrant of his abdomen, a kind of spasm. Oh, Doctor. This ever happened to him before? He says it comes and goes. Appendicitis doesn't usually come and go. He's seen other doctors. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This guy and I don't need an interpreter. Hey, Doctor, you can talk to me direct. I'm human. Really, I am. Hey, relax, okay? I never said you weren't. This hurt? Yes. Yes. No? No. Only when you push it and the spasms. Let's get some films on this action. Uh, flatten up right of the abdomen. And some chest films. Right, Doctor. The other doctor gave me antispasmodics for the pain. That was for the spasms, not the pain. You can nitpick on words all you want, but it stopped me from hurting. Obviously, only temporarily. She can give you a small hypo. I don't want to mask the pain too much. Well, I had a doctor like you gave me a painkiller, but it didn't kill the pain. All he wanted was a blow by blow on how much I hurt. Oh, he was great. Find out how much time he has to spend with us. Keep him under observation. I want him checked every two hours. You know something? That guy's terrific. He's just terrific. Is he that great with everybody? Or is it just because he likes Dr. me so Norman, much? Pediatric. Oh! Dr. Norman, the pediatric. <laughs> Hey, doctor, my mother, she has a fever. She's been throwing up a lot. Stomach, it hurts. Smickle. Smickle, you all right? You know this woman? Yes, I performed surgery on her about, uh, when was it, about uh, six weeks ago. Everything was fine first. When I went home. Diarrhea. It wasn't like you said. Didn't go away till yesterday. <laughs> now I can't keep down any food. Dr. Kendrick, she's lost more than 20 pounds. Tom, excuse us. Mm -hmm. Tom. What kind of surgery did you perform on her? Gastric resection. She'd had ulcers for years and finally. Neither diet nor medication could stop the bleeding. Surgery went normally. As normal as it ever is when you take out three quarters of somebody's stomach. 
Another one of his screw-ups just came in. Another, you're sure? Lady he performed a gastrectomy on six weeks ago. Since then, she's lost 20 pounds and she's vomiting. And what's the patient's name with his treating her? Bickle, Mrs. Bickle. And who do you think's treating her? Damn it, when we put Kendrick in medical services, I thought sure he'd keep him out of the way. Not out of hers. Charlie, I know the board wants him around until that malpractice suit's resolved. We can't fire him. Look like an admission. We hired an incompetent. What about after the suit? If he loses, we ask him to resign. Quietly. And if he wins, you'll reinstate Kendrick in surgery. <laughs> Made some mistakes. We all have. It's your department. But? I've got my own standards to live with. Suze, I realize you're the darling of a great big national ad agency and all, but I don't think that's going to move the soap. The soap? This is the client, the bleach. Couldn't you tell? I rest my case. You know, there are some people who like what I do. Mm-hmm. Has Christopher brought it up again today? about going to the Midwest office as associate art director. I gotta let them know soon. They want me there in just a couple of weeks. What about the mad world of big art? You let all that go? Hey, when was the last time I sold a painting of mine? And, um, I'd be giving up a lot more than that if I left. I can't tell you what to do. You can tell me how you feel. Hey, now, how about I buy a painting? There, that one. Uh, how much? Five hundred? Thousand? Is that enough to keep you here? Two thousand. Two thousand once, two thousand twice, two thousand three times. Sold to the handsome... You think that'll keep me here? Is that what you want? Either that or you find me another lady without a halo. Satisfactory technique. See right here? The bowel's distended, the loop's dilated. It's been dilated and distended before, I told you that. Hey, Doctor, could it be a, a spastic colon or, or colitis, maybe? I don't think so, Mr. Hudson. You've been letting the fleas work on that assumption for years. That's probably why you're in the hospital now. Fleas? Internists uh, who hop from one part of the body to another, poking needles and drawing blood. But they're fleas, what are you? I'm a doctor who's performed hundreds of exploratory surgeries before and want to know what's wrong with you to see if you have ileitis or a uh, perforated ulcer or a tumor. Oh, that's supposed to wipe out my mind, that word tumor, huh? Well, I ain't wiped out. I've been to enough fleas to know that a tumor doesn't grow and disappear, then grow and disappear some more. Mr. Hudson, maybe if you told us why you were so against surgery, we could help. Look, I'm a contractor, roofing. I didn't just work hard to get there, I sweated. So I know my stuff just like he does. When I put a roof on somebody's house, I can say, hey, that's his house, his roof. Well, this is my house, my body, and I gotta live in it no matter what shape it's in. And nobody remodels unless you're absolutely sure it's necessary. Is that what you're so colorfully trying to say? What I'm trying to say is I'm all in one piece. And unless you can prove to me that I'm due for a cave-in, I'm gonna stay that way. Doctor, let's continue the x-rays and painkiller so we can prove to a very stubborn man over the next few days, what the story is. Now, if you'll excuse me, I haven't got time for any more philosophy today. It's all right, Doctor. You'll learn. Learn what? That if you're thinking of cutting on Joe Hudson, you damn well better find out what he's all about first. I've got a few seconds to tell you why I love HBO. Bring up the offer. Whoa, I, I have to tell them about Driving Miss Daisy, the Josephine Baker story, Glory, and, and Cinemax. It's a movie lover's dream, and wait, wait! Call the number on your screen for big savings on HBO or HBO and Cinemax. It's a great deal on cable's best entertainment package. So hurry, call now. It's a great deal. Michigan. Come and see my 
colors when I'm all in white. If you're among the 40 million Americans who've been denied credit, American National Bank of New York can get you your own secured Visa or MasterCard, even if you have past credit problems or no credit history. Call now. Almost anyone can qualify, and approval is fast and easy. American National approves the majority within days. The call's only $10, and there's no risk. If you're turned down, we'll refund the cost of this call. There's absolutely no risk. Call now. The risk-free number is 1-900-726-VISA. Now you can get Gettysburg from Time Life Book's monumental series, The Civil War, for just $4.99. I'll be back to tell you how. In The Civil War from Time Life Books, you'll read why our country went to war against itself. You'll understand the cause and see the effects on the field and on the home front. Beginning with Gettysburg, you're as free to examine for 10 days to keep for only $4.99. And with your purchase, receive the Civil War Almanac free. Get both sides of this great and tragic story in Time Life Books, Civil War. Call now for your free examination of Gettysburg. If you decide to keep it, pay just $4.99. That's $10 off the regular price. Other books will follow about every other month on the same free examination. Buy only the ones you want, cancel any time. So dial this toll-free number now. We're waiting for your call. I don't care who you are, being a surgeon is more than just being a mechanic for the human body. Well, there we go. You know, Tom, for a surgeon, you're a wise man. And that's because he sounds like you. The line out of a textbook. Which doesn't make it any less true. Once you stop caring about your patients as people, what kind of a doctor are you? If your hands are good, you're terrific. If they aren't, you're as bad as you would have been anyway. Looks like uh, I'm the lucky one. When you're holding court, you can be as insulting as you like. But when I am, um, you take it easy, Doctor. Easy. Taking it easy isn't what takes ruptured tissue and makes it whole again, Charlie. And when you get down to it, neither is caring. Uh, right now, some more of these vegetables look better to me than a med school discussion. And another brave intern sounds retreat. Oh, no, that's what I've always admired about you, Paul. You expect so little from your friends. <laughs> No reflexes. What happened? Another motorcycle accident. The young man she was with is already dead. Pressure still falling. 60 over 40. All right, let's get her to OR. Belly distended. Five of course for six units. All right, come on, come on, let's go, let's go, move it. Bigger. Forget the suction. Give me a clock basement and laps. Come on, doctor. This isn't a biology lab. It's an emergency. I want this girl to live. Brandon, can we get her prepped for craniotomy while you're doing that? Go right ahead. Anything to save time. Irv? Dr. Brandon? Dr. Kelly? Yes. I'm Diller. Ann Diller's father. Police said she'd been in an accident, and the people in emergency said you were operating. Yeah. Oh. How is she? How's my daughter? She had a ruptured spleen. I had to remove that. I also repaired a laceration on her liver. You can live without a spleen, all right? She'll be all right. This is something about her head. You must be the new resurgent. Yes, I am. I'm sorry, Mr. Diller. Your daughter had an acute subdural hematoma. A surgery was able to relieve the pressure. Well, then she is all right. <sighs> no, she isn't. Uh, there are what we call uh, diffuse cerebral contusions. Well, what does that mean? 
It means that the actual substance of the brain was badly bruised. Now, we've taken an EEG. It was flat. If it remains that way... the doctors, specialists. We'll take you to her room. You transplant guys must have radar built in your head. And I did hear that you and Callie have yourselves a flat EEG. You know it's got to stay that way 24 hours before anybody can pull the plug. I also know I have 18 people in dialysis all waiting for a healthy kidney. Can you get me a tissue type on the patient? Pathology. Now look, the rules say that I can't ask the relatives about donating, but you can, especially if they trust you. Rich, the kid's not dead yet. We'll talk about it later, okay? What? Bugging you. You're not the brain man. You handle the part that's still alive. There's nobody in the hospital ever think you didn't do anything but the right thing. I'm not used to giving up, Rich. Sure, sure. Surgeon versus death. I understand that. But you are used to it happening quickly sometimes, right from the night. A man who gets to slow death down, Earl. Is he so bad? Paul, if her EEG stays zilch, the only way you'll beat anybody's death is by helping me. I'll think about it. Thanks. You know as well as I do, Mr. Hudson, that you're to remain in bed as long as you're here for observation. I ain't gonna be observed on a bedpan. Mr. Hudson, we're only trying to help. I can help into the bathroom like some normal human being. Mr. Hudson, please. No! You know you're impossible. You sound like my second wife. Now get that thing out of here unless you're thinking of putting flowers on it and wearing it at the Easter parade. <laughs> All right, Mr. Hudson, have it your way. Ladies, escort the king to his throne. Pleasure. Okay. Get away from me. Look, it's like my stomach, not my legs. I can walk. Get out of here. Come on, let me alone. Let me alone. I can walk. <laughs> Can you stay out of here? <laughs> well, hi. You said you were going to work late. Orange is pretty thin, so I figured I'd let the hacks handle whatever came into emergency. Well, I didn't make anything to eat. Paint by the numbers or what? Well, very clever. I have to have something hidden away. Oh, you're going to have to forge. That's the brakes of the business. You. you like a drink. And you are one of my favorite drinking buddies. And the only person who doesn't drink beer. It's the brew of the people. Oh, you've been in school or the hospital all your life. What do you know about people? I know how they die. You know, it'd be okay with me if once in a while we talked about what's bugging you. Nothing's bugging me. It was just another one of my usual brilliant days. Not that I wasn't reminded that there are times when brilliance isn't enough. What's that? Oh, like about three days. Is it that bad? 
I'll survive. But somebody else won't. Not with a brain like Jelly, she won't. There's nothing we could do. She might as well have been DOA. Can I help? Is there anything I can do? Anything I've ever done, babe, I've done for myself. Paul, can't you ever need anybody? When I'm in that OR and I've got somebody lying there depending upon me, I can't need anybody else, Susan. Come on. I'll take you to that little place with the phony French name. Oh, I, uh, I checked on that bigger woman. And? I'm having a tough time getting an upper GI on her. Where do you think the obstruction is? It could be an abscess in the suture line where Kendrick sewed the stomach back to the jejunum. That still doesn't account for the loss of weight or the diarrhea. No. So, Kendrick's giving her packed cells, building up for surgery should be some as soon as possible, probably, um, probably tomorrow. Who's going in? Uh, Tom wants to. I've already said no. You say no to me? Dr. Ross, I... You're making this a more ticklish situation than it has to be. Dr. Ross, I... I'll go in and relieve the obstruction. You can assist. You know, Charlie, it just might be that there are some friends you can expect something from after all. There. You're telling me. Okay, let's take a story now. Get those retractors in, give me room. Fever retractor. Another. Ready with the sucker? I'm ready. Lap sponges. It's a rupture. Suction. Get it out, get it out. She doesn't need it. Hand in there, help out. Cut the suction. She's clean. You did it. Yeah, sure she's clean. Now all we have to do is hit her hard with antibiotics. Here's the obstruction. Right in the suture. Lovely job, Tom. I sewed her tightly. Well, not tightly enough. Now I have to re-suture the anastomosis she made. Fire clamp. Rubber shot clamp. Charlie. What's the problem? Take a good look at what you're clamping. I do know what I'm talking about, don't I? This is the ligament of trites. My God. And this is... the alien. The wrong loop of gut. I just don't know what I must have been thinking about when I had her on the table. I'd like to know what those assisting you were thinking of. But nobody would have noticed anything. He probably had them mesmerized with his accounts of how he shows so much concern for his patients. Damn it, Paul, what do you want from me? Going to take a scalpel to myself? I've gotten to know Mrs. Fickle. She's a good woman. She has a good family. She... How the hell am I supposed to feel? Knowing... Knowing if it weren't for what... Just now it happened in that OR. I'd be responsible for making her lose all that. You're supposed to feel like hanging up your trusty scalpel. You Paul, oh, take it easy. We'll clear this all up, Tom. We'll have a meeting. Private talk. Ah, uh, yeah, sure, sure. We'll have a meeting of private talk. Pickles will certainly feel much better after that. See you later, Tom. Dr. Cook? I don't care what happens with his malpractice suit, Charlie. You can't reinstate him in surgery. Not after this. I told Tom I'd be good in denial. I'll talk to him alone. The man's got the soul of an internist. There's nothing wrong with staying in medical services. Why can't Kendrick see that? I owe him the chance to make that choice himself, Paul. The doctor is owed that chance. Oh, what about his victims? What are they owed? Dr. Green, 
know what this dumb thing cost me? I could see two double figures a day for this kind of money. Mr. Hutt, if you Instead, stop that... I'm stuck here. What am I stuck with? Game shows, game shows, Mr. game Hutt. shows. Sometimes I get a little carried away. Mr. Hudson, all Dr. Brandon wants to do is explain your options to you. And you sound like my ex-wife just before the lawyers served the divorce papers on me. All right, all right, go ahead. I trusted her before then, too. Mr. Hudson, over the last 24 hours, your film show a continued narrowing in your lower right quadrant, consistent with a tumor, a fluid, or an inflammatory mass. That's not an option. That's medical mishmash. Now, which one of those things have I got? After the surgery, I should be able to tell you that's what exploratories are for. You didn't hear me agree to any exploratory, did you? If it's a tumor, Mr. Hudson, wouldn't you like to know whether or not it's benign? It might help when you're bidding on your next contracting job to know if you'll be around when the roof is ready to go up. No, yeah, I'm going home. I'll get another doctor to treat me like I was treated before. And maybe you'll end up fine. But doctors believe in statistics, and statistics say you won't. You remember the other day telling me about the fleas? Well, I talked to an orderly. You know what they call surgeons around this place? Blades. And for blades like you, they got a special name. Swashbucklers, like pirates. Damn it, I'm not letting you walk out of here and then drop dead. You can't do that. Not to me. Not to yourself. Okay. Doctor. I don't think you know me yet, but I think you're starting to understand me. I already have a surgery scheduled for this afternoon. Your laparotomy will come right after that. Okay. You know better how much of his stomach has to go when you get in and see his ulcers. Yeah, it looks like about 60%, though. Probably get them out, resection, and close just in time to get over to OR3 to meet the reluctant dragon. Reluctant dragon? Hmm. Roofing contractor with abdominal spasms. He hates me. <laughs> he knows you that well. You think it's easy to be so popular? All the workups in here? Just like you ordered, you've got the patient's entire history, past, present. You also have a pretty big piece of his future, if you, uh, if you want to see him. He's in 419. Everything's in here. There's no need. You've been seeing the guy. Anything you want to tell me? No. Okay. Go tell him he's in terrific hands. See you in the OR. The OR? I'll be there. I'll tell you, Gene, what I'd really like is for you to bring me something tricky next time. <laughs> I'd love to, Paul, but those are the ones I'm able to cure. <laughs> Somebody ought to tell this dude how lucky he is. The way we saw how the same surgery was botched this morning. Well, don't worry, Paul. This is over, Dr. Silver will run in, show him all the ulcers you cut out. The patient will immediately kneel and kiss your ring. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Todd. It's another little blinker. Yeah, they're all over the place. We might run out of clamps here. There we are. Now, five of these at one time. That might start to get my adrenaline up. Oh, watch out. He's getting great surgeon fantasies again. All this pressure's going down. I just picked up two more bleeders. Big ones. Clap. Clap. It's getting worse. What if you put them under with everything I... Touch turns the blood. Nothing that will act as an anticoagulant, you know that. Turn with vitamin K. Get some fresh whole blood. Suction. Paul, take a look at this. Suction. He's really flowing. There's no clotting at all. Start him with vitamin K. Large clam. Dr. Brandon, do you want me to get the hematology lab? Right away. He's going into shock. Roseanne, get that hematologist up here right now. We got a bleeder in OR1. Get the hematologist up here right away. Get some fresh whole blood. Suction. 
We pumped on the chest for an hour. In spite of adrenaline, isopro, every possible effort, we couldn't link mechanical response to electrical activity. Any questions? Yes. Uh, Dr. Brandon, this was a routine gastric resection. Now, how did this happen? According to the pathologist's report, the patient's ulcers were malignant. In the presence of carcinoma and low-grade infection, we had diffuse intravascular coagulation. And you went right ahead into surgery? The condition was not known to me. What about the workups? Wasn't DIC referred to in the hematologist's report? Didn't show up, no. Are we to understand that you knew of the infection and yet you performed surgery? As has already been kindly pointed out, this was a routine gastrectomy. The infection was so mild as to be negligible. There was no reason to wait any longer. On paper, going in, it was no different from any of the hundreds of others I performed without incident. Oh. I assume that when you talked with the patient before surgery, you informed him of the possible, if not probable, risk. The referring physician spoke to him. I did not. It was an informed consent. Any other questions? Well, thank you, Dr. Brandon. Mm -hmm. Next case, Miss Lee Anderson, presented by Dr. Frederick Josephine. Paul, you know, uh, what you said about it, all of it seeming the same on paper, that may be true. It is true. Yeah, there's still a problem. 30% of gastric ulcers are cancerous. Now, when you couple that with an infection, well, maybe you shouldn't have gone in. Funny, Gene, you didn't think of this before. If I didn't know you better, I'd think you were worried about a possible malpractice suit. I'm not looking for a goat, Paul. Well, that's good. Because legally, you're as liable as I am. Now, you remember that when you made your deposition. And you remember that you never gave a thought to unusual consequences. You never cared. Whatever happened today, Paul, you had no right to take it out on me. No right at all. Believe me, Susan, I had your pleasure in mind, too. You couldn't tell. Believe me, you couldn't tell if I was even on your mind. That mortality means. You know what they said? They said, don't worry, Doc. What's the difference if you couldn't make a man live? What that committee said was that they agreed that you did everything you could. Yeah, they agreed. They agreed. I agree. But all I knew about that patient was his name. He was a human being. And all I bothered to learn was his name. The swashbuckler in me doesn't like losing the fight. And there's something else in me that hates losing the fight. When I first met you, what you are turned me on. Your ego, your confidence, that can be very exciting. But what I waited for, what I hoped for, was the time that you'd let me be a part of that. Please, Paul. Paul. No, I'm not somebody you can hold in your arms and cling to. You're a surgeon. You're not a god. 
tell me right now. If you want me to leave, if you want me to take that job and get myself out of here, then I will. I loved you, Susan. I want you to know that. All the time you were here. And all I wanted was for you to talk to me. To give. But you can't do that, can you, Paul? You can't be just a man. since she came in here. Her heart's still going on its own, isn't it? Her reflexes. Brandon, she's never recovered any of her reflexes. She's never recovered anything. Then it's your considered medical opinion that all this technology is as alive as that girl is. More alive. I'm going to give the order. And pull the plug just like that. There's nothing left for us to do. You know that. What about the kidney? I've got three matches, just waiting. Are you, you up to making the pitch? As up as you are to deciding which two out of those three get the goods. Is that what you've come to tell me? Mr. Diller? You're doctors, you're surgeons. You put people together, you perform miracles. You do it every day. Not every day. We try. Sometimes there's just nothing we can do. But that's my daughter in there. You can't take the easy way out. You can't cheat me out of her. Mr. Diller, listen. This happened. You said it, what she needed was a miracle. Sure. Sure it happens. To you it happens over and over and over until you don't even feel it. To me, it only happens now. Five nine. 
Sign the consent. Well, you get it to him. Let's believe me. Never stops growing, right? Mr. Hudson, that's true, but sometimes... Right? Usually, but that it doesn't never mean... stops hurting, does it? Try and stop. Try and stop. It never stops hurting until you're dead. Mr. Hudson, you're not... This is... This is my body. I, I, I live in here. And I want to keep living here. Oh, dear God, please. Please. No surgery. today, or uh, is it safe to talk to you? Always complaints, Charlie, but I guess it's safe enough for you anyway. I suppose you heard about your victory. Victory? Well, I had my little talk with Tom Kendrick. No matter what happens about his malpractice suit, he's decided to stay in medical services. Kendrick's never made it because he's always thought like a human being. And never a god. But you're talking about the protection, Paul, that's all. I don't know whether it's a necessity or, or a crutch. Tell me, old chief of surgery who thinks like a shrink, what am I protecting? We're all protecting ourselves from death. Nonsense. All day long, that's what a surgeon does, fight death. But he defeats it for somebody else, he defeats his own. Oh, come on now. No, 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 think about it. Feel it. My protection is to get above the battle, chief of staff. Yours is not to feel. Keep saying it doesn't matter to uh, keep away from people, patients, friends. Charlie, I take it back. I don't think it's safe for you to talk with me. Well, if it works for you, fine. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen many times. One of these days, it could get lonely not being human. And what are you going to do? Hey, Paul. Paul, I, I'm sorry. Um, I'll buy you lunch. I'll tell the hospital. How's about that? No. No, I'm late for surgery. It's going to take another poor, tired hulk of a man and make him whole. All right, Paul. See you later. See it, Doc? Take a good look. I'm going to take it home and get it framed. What can I say? The shadow's gone. So the spasms, pal, and without any of your cutting. You're a very lucky man, Mr. Hudson. But we still don't know what's causing your problem. But you do know I was right. I know you got well in spite of my best efforts to cure you. Well, we got to leave the fleet. Something to do, don't we? You just stick to that diet Dr. Heverly made out. And take the antispasmodics at the first twinge. That'll give the fleas time to do their own kind of exploring. You don't have to tell me twice, Doc. And you, beautiful? I want to tell you something. You don't remind me of my ex-wife. Not one little bit. <laughs> well, so long, Doc. So long. Goodbye, Mr. Hudson. I'll be seeing you, Doctor.
That's Susan Stewart, please. Susan. No, no. No, listen, things are fine. No, there's no hurry. No, no. No, your clothes can stay another day. I just thought, wait. I want to talk to you. Susan, listen. Listen, Susan. Susan, wait. I'm telling you. I want you to stay. I need you to stay. Uh, if you bite, I'll drink wine. Please? Dr. Montague, 5 West. 58101, Dr. Frederick, 2 East, 5677.